Hey everyone, a big problem I see in lower elo games is that when you start to get below 50% health or when someone takes a big trade on you, you tend to back off in fear of dying instead of trading back. When this happens, it almost always is a for sure lost lane since the enemy laner would have so much more health that you wouldn't be able to trade back anymore. In this video, I'll be analyzing a replay from 100 Thieves top laner someday where he's playing Gragas vs Akali and it'll be a perfect example of how to hold your ground and trade even when it seems like the trade is lost. Don't worry if you don't play these two champions, the information in this video will apply to almost any top lane matchup where you have the wave clear advantage. With that being said, let's get into analysis. Gragas is a melee, semi-tank mage in this current meta versus Akali, a mostly AP assassin. Kragas has more range with his abilities and more wave clear, but Akali has a lower cooldown on her primary damage ability and has no mana. But having energy over mana isn't always a good thing. For example, Akali's Q cooldown is 1.5 seconds and is her primary trade tool. She can only use 2 or 3 before running out, then one more if she uses her shroud, which gives her some energy back. So when she runs out of energy, that's a small window to trade back. We will see examples of this later in the video. Anyways, let's go over the game plan. Mission 1, let the wave push. Gragas has more wave clear once he gets 2 spells, so if you're wondering, why wouldn't Gragas push early? That's why. If he pushes level 1, when Akali actually has the wave clear advantage, he will lose trades and she'll freeze, putting him in a bad spot. Mission 2, thin the wave while trading. As Akali pushes, Someday doesn't want the wave to be too big for mission 3, so he wants to hit Akali and the minions at the same time to thin the wave. Mission 3. Hold a freeze until out of mana. With the wave clear advantage, Someday can freeze for however long he likes, forcing Akali to be in a spot where she can easily die to ganks so she'll be pressured to break the freeze. Alright, moving on to the gameplay. As he walks in lane after leashing, the first thing Someday does is use Body Slam on the three low health melee minions and Akali at the same time. This is a concept in a lot of other videos, but trading and wave clearing at the same time is the most efficient use of mana. One cool thing to look at here though, instead of standing back and using Body Slam from further away, he walks up close and actually goes into an auto animation, making it seem like he's just going to auto them to death, then catches Akali off guard with his Body Slam. After that, he's working on mission 1 and standing back with his body slam on cooldown, but he takes a little bit of poke from Akali Q, which you can see how many times she's used it compared to his body slam. Then walks up and autos her as she goes for a last hit. He thought she wouldn't have enough energy for another Q, so he was going to auto her while she autoed the minion, meaning she couldn't auto back. But since she just got enough energy for a Q, she got the CS with a Q, then traded an auto back. He moves to the other side of the lane to get away from Akali and starts autoing minions and last hits one. He took some poke just for some meaningless autos? Why do you think he did this? The reason is, he sees that Talia is doing scuttle crab and could be coming for a gank soon. So if he just sits back and lets Akali push the wave, she will hit level 2 and he will be level 1, so the gank wouldn't work. So he's trying to soften up these minions so he can kill them and hit level 2 for when Talia gets here. Let's watch what happens. He walks up to auto and Akali gets in his face to harass, so he trades back with his body slam. Akali hits level 2, then right as Talia gets there someday last hits a minion and also hits level 2. So if he didn't soften up the wave like he did, he would have hit level 2 way too late and the wave would be so big that they wouldn't be able to gank Akali. Plus, Talia is on a time crunch right now. She hasn't done her blue buff, so if the level 2 gank doesn't work out, she's going to get really behind. Really cool calculated minion tracking from someday. Anyways, Talia comes in for the gank and they pick up an easy kill. Akali doesn't use flash and Talia got the kill, so laning wise she won't be too far behind. After they kill Akali, Someday recalls and TPs back to lane. It's super important he does this and that you do this when you are out of potions and you just killed the enemy laner with the wave pushing towards you like this because they are going to TP back to lane with full health, and if you're half health, you can either be dove by their jungler, or if you take a bad trade, be forced to recall with a big wave dying to your tower. Alright, now that he's back in lane, he can start working on mission 2 and 3, trading while thinning the wave while holding his freeze. As soon as he gets in lane, he throws a Q that hits minions and Akali, then a body slam which goes for the cannon minion. Then just a few seconds later, puts another Q that hits a lot of the minions, then hits level 3, levels up his W, hits the minion wave with that and another body slam as well. He's spamming abilities right now. The wave was getting really big and he wants to hold his freeze. 
even after using all of those AoE abilities on the wave, the wave is still huge because the next minion wave arrived and Akali is really focusing on breaking the freeze with her Q. This has given Someday a ton of free trade so far, but the wave is still too big. So, as soon as his Q comes off cooldown, he goes for a trade in the middle of the wave, letting his Q charge up all the way and do a lot of damage to the minions, finally thinning the wave enough. His wave dies, so the minions start to walk towards his tower. He lets the melee one hit the tower, but makes sure the ranged ones stay out. If the ranged ones hit tower range, the freeze will break. See how he's only last hitting now? He doesn't use any abilities until Akali comes back from warding and uses her Q on the wave to attempt to break the freeze. As soon as she does, he hits the wave and Akali with a Q and a body slam and his W, continuing mission 2. Now this is where the not trading when scared stuff comes into play that I was talking about at the start of the video. They start trading here and Akali drops him to about 30% health while she's at 50%. And she did that damage pretty fast. Most players would get scared here and back off and let the freeze break. But Someday sees that she has no energy after using so many spells on him. So he walks up and hits Akali with a W and a Q, chunking her to 20% health. Then, waits for his W to come off cooldown and flash body slams her for a solo kill. See, that's where energy users can have trouble. If they spam too much, they run out of energy fast and can't use anything. That's also why our energy users aren't supposed to build that much cooldown reduction. They run out of energy, so CDR ends up being less efficient. Zed is an exception to this because his gameplay entirely revolves around his ult. Anyways, after he kills her, she shoves the wave in and recalls. On the way back to lane, he drops a pink in this brush. This is a really good pink for top laners, especially when going versus champions that like to gank from behind. So he's protecting his mid laner's top riverside and Graves can't gank him from behind anymore. He gets back to lane and the wave is already pushing back to him since he shoved it in before recalling. So he goes back to mission 1 and lets the wave push again. Even though he's stronger than Akali, look how he only uses his Q on the two melee minions then last hits one with W and an auto. Then he body slams her without hitting anything else. It's obvious he wants the wave to push back to him. After he hits the body slam he backs away, letting Akali clear the wave and push it in. He goes in the brush so the minions won't hit him while he waits for the waves to meet. As he comes out of the brush, Akali hits him with her E, then takes the mark and jumps on him. On the way in, he hits her with a W, a Q, and a body slam to do about 50% of her health again. Harassing and thinning the same time for mission 2. Talia starts coming through tri brush for a gank. So a few seconds before, Someday goes in for a trade and baits Akali into using her shroud and most of her energy. Then as Talia turns the corner, he uses body slam to stun Akali and make Talia's W, E, Q combo easy to hit, giving them another kill. At this point, Akali is 0-3 and, and is going to be really far behind now, so the lane is over. It's safe to say Someday executed this game plan pretty much flawlessly. Anyways, let's do a quick recap. First, Someday let the wave push back to him since he knew when he got level 2 and 3 he would have more wave clear than Akali so he could control the wave. He softened up a few minions by autoing them so he could hit level 2 as soon as his jungler came for a gank, giving them an easy kill. Then he recalled in base to avoid getting stuck in lane with no health and match teleport to the Kali. When he got back to lane, the wave was pretty big, so he started spamming abilities on a Kali and the wave until it was thinned out to 4 minions. He then held the freeze for a while until a Kali went for a big trade, using all of her energy but chunking someday pretty hard. Instead of backing down, he noticed her lack of energy and traded back, then flash body slammed her for a solo kill. After he recalled, he came back to lane and did the exact same game plan and let the wave push to the same spot, then held the freeze the same way he did before until his jungler came around for another really easy gank, making Akali 0-3 and closing the lane out. That's going to be all for this video, see you next time.